Yes, I am definitely ready. I've always wanted to detail the P45. Today is the day. So as most of you know, I've had a long relationship with Jim and Jesse Glickenhaus and specifically the P45 since its debut in 2006. Although I had experience as a young detailer with the Ferrari Enzo at my first shop in Harrison, New York, the P45 was the very first time I entered into the one-off hypercar category and the start of my fascination with documenting detailing and car culture on camera. Here. Just know what you're doing. We are in line behind the P45 Jim Glickenhouse's ridiculous Ferrari. So I've driven behind it, I've had a poster on my wall, and I've seen it in Jim's private garage, but I've never detailed it. So we headed over to the Glickenhaus factory to meet up with Jesse and the P45. Now, because of the size of the project, the complexity of the project, and the fact that it's being delivered to Pebble Beach the following week, I we'll called in one of my closest yeah. friends and detailing mentors, Derek Bemis from Detail Works in Southern California, to help out on the project. He's been in a bunch of my videos in the past from wet sanding and even cleaning Barry McGuire's brand new Ford GT in front of Barry's house a few years back with me. And now the P45 and the upcoming white 003S, which we walked past in the Glicken House garage. So I was really excited to work side by side with a close buddy on this white whale of a detail. Let's start with what's in the back of the truck, Larry. Do that again, because I move too fast. I'm so fast. Not everyone's professionals here. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> After a quick chat with Jesse, I really wanted to get this back to the detailing studio, but first I had to hear it start for the first time cold because I've only seen it in a parking lot or on the lawn somewhere or on the highway and I've never heard it actually start. So enjoy the sound. With our ears bleeding from the small garage startup, it was freaking amazing. Jesse pulled it outside to warm it up a bit before we drove to the studio. Now, as you can see very quickly here in the sun, the paint needs to be corrected, so we certainly had our work cut out for us. But on the way, I wanted to know the story behind why and how the P45 was created. So P45 is the only one-off Ferrari ever made without Ferrari's explicit knowledge when it was happening. Andrea and Pina Farina came to us and asked Good this way. if you could build anything in the world, what would you build? Right away my dad said I'd build a G4 Ferrari, a modern P4 Ferrari on a new supercar chassis. Originally it wasn't necessarily going to be on an Enzo chassis. We looked at the MC12, we looked at a bunch of actual pure race car chassis, but we wanted to make it road legal. Right. And the best way to make it road legal was starting with an existing road legal car. And so, that's the thing that sort of set us on the path to becoming manufacturers. That question, if you could build anything, what would you build? Once we arrived and pulled the P45 into the studio for the very first time, the feeling was sort of surreal, but at the same time, it was actually combined with this weird pressure of having to get the scratches and swirls out of paint in a car that I've wanted to detail forever. If you followed my channel for some time, you'll know that these are my favorite kinds of swirls. I know that sounds a little bit weird, but they're from usage, not neglect. Yes, there could have been more lubrication during washing in the past. Yes, there could have been more protection added, of course, but I know Jim and he drives each of his cars regardless of the weather. And to me, that's just as important. Everybody has a bad day, yeah. but if you have a built-in tow hook, it's not the end of the world. So. After 16 years, it's finally time to dive in. I was so excited. Step one is to get Ammo Foam, Brute, and the Foam Cannon. For this project, I mixed both 50-50 and filled the reservoir with water and gave it a gentle stir. Next, I filled the wheel bucket with wheel soap and the paint bucket with towels, foam soap, and then filled it a quarter of the way with water. Although some lower sections were dirty and had driving pedals, the overall paint and wheels needed a basic wash before we could start the correction process. While I was getting the tools all set up, Derek rinsed the paint and wheels to blow off the top layer of dirt and dust. Next, he switched the lance to the foam cannon and covered the paint and wheels in lubrication. While the 
paint was soaking, Derek worked one side of the car while I worked the other side, focused on the wheels. We used a small wheel woolly, a wheel brush, wheel mitt, and of course scrub brush for the rubber. Next, we washed the paint and used a small brush to get into the tight areas. As we really started to clean the surface grime and all the tight spots up close, the extent of the scratches became apparent from all of his weekly drives. But I I'm do like, love the fact that he takes it to go get groceries, man. That's, yeah, that's, you know, listen. that's so awesome. Afterwards, we rinsed the paint again before drying the paint with a damp microfiber towel and compressed air. Next were the door jams, but on this car, they're a little bit more unique. To open up the hood, the doors needed to be closed. The engine lid, once it was open, was held up with an aluminum rod, which is super cool. Now the engine and the front or the front area was just as intricate and pretty as the outside, but it was also equally dirty. So we used the pro foamer instead to minimize water in these one-off areas. Once lightly applied, we got fresh towels and then gently wiped the carbon fiber underneath the frunk area. Now the surface was clean, but you can clearly see that it's all swirled out. So when we're polishing the outside of the car, we're also gonna have to polish the inside as well. The engine, same thing, but a bit more road dirt and sensitive electrical parts. I wanted to avoid a direct shot with a pressure washer at all costs for obvious reasons. So frothy was a huge win here. Once again, a light mist on most every surface is usually all you need to lubricate the area and then simply wipe it up. Next up was the interior. Now this wasn't completely filthy, but it was certainly driven a whole lot. And I think there was a bunch of sweat and just usage uh, on the seats. So first I vacuumed the area before spraying lather on the floor and then using the steam machine to sort of heat up that rubber and then clean it or wipe it with a microfiber towel, which was quite dirty when I finished the first side, as you could see. I repeated the same basic steps, but this time I used shag on the sweaty Alcantara seats and driver side bolsters, seat bottom, and of course the door handle. On the steering wheel, I used lather, an interior brush, and a stitch and seam brush to get around all the intricate buttons and tight spots, which on this steering wheel, there were a lot. I repeated the same steps on the passenger side as well. Once our first round of basic cleaning was done, we closed everything up and got ready for the paint correction. Okay, so we finished uh, washing and cleaning and drying. We did the interior. Now we're getting ready for the polishing stage and something interesting came up. Uh, we all went to different polishes, machines, uh, pads, and it's kind of an interesting question because a lot of people say, hey, uh, what's the best tool to use? In this case, we have three different uh, detailers. We've got Derek over there, Dan, and myself. We're all using a little bit of a different technique. So what I'm using is the Rupes wool with the Rupes, there it is right there, with the Rupes yellow. And if I walk over here, we have Derek. This is impromptu. Here we go. What are you using? Hey, so uh, using the Bigfoot 21, but I'm using the microfiber, or, uh, Meguiar's microfiber cutting disc with Meguiar's uh, 110 Ultra Pro speed compound. And I'm gonna finish with the yellow soft buff polishing disc and the 210 Ultra Pro polish. Got it, what are you doing? I'm using the 15 millimeter with the yellow wool, blue cutting, and then I'm gonna finish with the yellow foam with the yellow polish. So basically I'm using the 21, he's using the 15, Derek's using the 21. We all have a little bit of a different flavor, a different little taste, the things that's most favorite to us. And the bottom line is everybody says, what's your, what's the best this, what's the best that? It's almost impossible to answer that question. It's really what you practice with. What's the one that you feel the most comfortable? What's the most favorite jeans that you wear that are just the most comfortable thing in the world? It's that kind of concept, but on a car. This one's an incredibly expensive one three different techniques, so to speak, 
and it's gonna come out great. So, only thing left to do, headphones on, polish the car. As you can see, after round one, we're looking much better in this 50-50 shot, but it's still a little bit hazy, which we'll handle in the polishing step later on. Once everybody was done with the cutting, I switched pads and refueled with some beef jerky, and we all started the final finishing step. Here's where everything sort of slows down and time really expands on a project like this. For the tight spots, Derek used the Rupaz Nano and a yellow foam pad. So this is a slow and tedious process, but check out how clear the reflected image is from the previous compound and polishing steps, so it's totally worth using the one inch here. For the really tight spots when even a one inch doesn't fit, Derek used 210, a microfiber towel, and his hand to clean up the tightest of edges. For the rear diffuser, Dan and I had what looks like a slumber party as I watched this back during editing, but we managed to clean up the underneath while Derek in his oversized battery powered toothbrush worked every tight spot on the P45, which took forever, but this is what separates a pretty good detail with a great detail. Late on day one, my new wheel jackets finally arrived after the compounding and polishing of the paint. As you can see, the wheels are now covered in dusty sort of restoration pad blowout dust. And by putting them on beforehand, which I didn't have, it would have saved a few minutes of re-cleaning the wheels later on. So I'll have more information on these in a future episode. They're really cool. Bright and early the next day, Derek and I opened up all the doors to focus on the interior polishing. Look at the top of the wheel well. It's absolutely gorgeous exposed carbon fiber, but it has a ton of swirls. Same thing on the engine components and the same thing on the door jams. So first, we used masking tape to protect the rubber trim and the emblems. Derek worked on the one and three inch parts while I focused on the wheel wells with the six inch machine. The before and after here was absolutely insane. Now I love unpainted yet clear coated carbon fiber weave. It's like it's moving on its own when it's perfectly polished. The camera is not doing it justice. In person, it was stunning. For the interior pieces, Derek used a rotary and a steady hand because the tape wouldn't stick to the Alcantara and it just became more annoying than helpful and everything worked out great. We repeated the same steps on the interior part of the hood and just endless door jam polishing as well. Once we were finally done with all the tight area polishing, the dust and the sling is inevitable on a project of this magnitude over two days. So we put the doors down and rewashed the paint to flush out the jams. Now this wash is a little bit different than a normal wash as we're just simply soaking the paint. We're not wiping it and then power washing the compound dust and oils away before drying with a damp towel and compressed air. So there's really not a lot of agitation going on here. Okay, we're rounding third. Now I just finished up the windows and they look okay, but they're still a little bit hazy because they're Lexan uh, plexiglass, that kind of feel, race car feel, and they're a little bit softer. One thing to keep in mind is make sure you sort of stay away from squeegees. They tend to scratch on softer glass or Lexan like this one here, so keep that in mind. Now we're gonna be doing uh, Reflex Pro. The goal here is to do the outside first, then the inside. So we're gonna lift everything up like it is right now, including the front, and just let everything cure for a little while. And then we're gonna go in and play. I'm gonna test and make sure I can put Gillette Pro on there, then uh, a little bit of tire dressing, et cetera, and then go back and just touch a few things up and we're almost ready. I think, I'm not 100% sure that Mr. Glickenhaus is actually gonna come pick this one up and drop off uh, the 003. So pretty exciting stuff, let's get to it. The fastest way to work Reflex Pro is with a partner. One person applies and one person removes, and an intricate car like this one can be done in 15 to 20 minutes.
Once the outside and the jams were done, then I focused on coating the one-off bespoke matte wheels in Gelair Pro. Afterwards, I added ammo mud to the tires for a satin finish to help the wheels pop or stand out against the red paint a bit. Well guys, we're done with the P45 and this thing looks absolutely amazing. It's been a dream of mine to actually detail this particular car. Now in 2005 or six, I can't remember, I drove behind it with my wife in the car and I said, I have to detail this car. Now fast forward 15, 16 years later, uh, Jesse and Jim actually called and said, hey, can you, you know, prepare this for Pebble Beach? And it was a very big deal uh, for me to do that on this car. Plus to get to do it with my buddy back there, where is he, right there? Derek Bemis, uh, so doing it with one of your closest friends and doing a car like this, very big deal. Now tomorrow, Jim is coming with the 003, another ridiculous car for us to prepare uh, again for Pebble Beach. I think they're leaving at separate times or whatever, but uh, hopefully we'll get to chat with him a little bit. I'm gonna pull this outside, do a little bit of uh, uh, shots in the sun so you guys can take a look at it. It's stunning, I mean, look at this fender wall right here. Oh my gosh, it's just uh, very exciting. Anyways, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Hey, wow. good to see you. Good to see you. All right, here wow, it is. Wow, she looks beautiful. My goodness. We even polished all the carbon fiber inside and in the front, which is pretty cool. Oh, it's magnificent. 